Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to install MySQL Server and MySQL Workbench onto your computer, and then how to connect the two together so you can access your local server through MySQL Workbench. I'm going to be doing this on Windows since Windows has the most complicated install process, but if you're on a Mac or Linux system, make sure to check the description where I included links on where to install MySQL Server and MySQL Workbench since it's much easier to do on Mac and Linux. And then if you are on Mac and Linux, make sure you come back to the end of this video so that you can figure out how to connect your SQL Server to your SQL Workbench. So to get started, if you're on Windows, go to the link in the Windows section of the description and that'll lead you to this page where if you scroll down to the bottom, there's going to be a button for MySQL installer for Windows. And this is the all-in-one installer that you can download. So just click go to download page. And when this loads, you're presented with two options of the installers that you want to download. The first option is just a normal installer that accesses the internet while it's installing to download everything. And the second installer comes with everything pre-installed and downloaded. So I'm just going to go with the first option here because we don't actually want everything that the installer has inside of it. So this will be a smaller download for us. And if we click download, then we're brought to this page where we're prompted to either log in or sign up, or we can just skip all of that and just start the download. And from here, we can just start the download by clicking save and that'll download the installer. And as soon as that's done being installed, you just click on the installer to open it up. And you may get prompted to ask for permission. Just click yes to allow it permission as many times as needed. And then it'll open up the installer for us where we just have to accept the license. And then we're given these options for how we want to install. Do we want to use the default, which is the developer settings, server only, client only, absolutely everything or custom. And in our case, we're going to go with a custom install because we only want the server and the workbench and we don't want any of the extra stuff that'll download with the developer install. So we can click on custom, click next. And from here, we just go to the MySQL server section, select the server that we want and pop it over. There should only be one option for you. And then in applications, we're gonna do the same thing with MySQL workbench. And again, there should only be one option and just send that over. And that's everything that we need to install. If you want, you can download some samples and examples as well as part of your install process, but I'm not going to do that. From here, just click next and then click execute to download and install these. And it may take a while depending on your internet speed. And as soon as that's done, downloading and installing, we can just click the next button. And from here, we now need to configure our SQL server. So if we click next, we just want to do standalone mode since we just want individual SQL server and we don't want to have any clustering. So just keep it selected on standalone, click next. And from here, we want to make sure we select development computer, which will mean that my SQL server will take the least amount of memory as possible from our computer while it's running. And then leave all of this other stuff defaulted to what it is. This is just the port it'll be connecting through. And if you want to open your firewall ports to be able to access it from inside of your internal network or outside, just leave that selected and then click next. And from here, this is new for MySQL Server 8. It's saying that they're using a new hashing version that's not supported with the older MySQL version. And in our case, we can use that new version of hashing since we don't need to support an older version of MySQL. So we can just leave that selected, click next. And here we need to give a password for our root user, which is the user that has access to everything on our server. So just give it any password that you want. And then after you're done giving it a password, just click next. And then this is where you have a few options to change here. You can start MySQL server on system startup, which is what I recommend doing since it's much easier than manually starting the server every time that you turn off your computer and turn it back on. And it takes such little memory that it's not going to actually impact the performance of your computer. So I recommend leaving this checked and just keeping this exactly defaulted as it is, clicking next. And then all we need to do is click execute and it'll run all the steps that we told it to do in the earlier setup for configuring it. And if we just give it a little bit of time, now that that's done, we can click finish. And from here, just hit next and we have everything finished. So now we can just start MySQL Workbench after the setup's complete. And if we click finish and wait a little bit and MySQL Workbench should open up. Now you may already have a connection here. If you double click on this and type in your password you created earlier, you are able to connect to your server. But if you don't have this, you'll need to create a new connection. So in order to do that, we just click this plus button to create a new connection, give it whatever name we want. We can just say local server. And then we want to use standard TCP IP, which is what we selected earlier. 
We want to use the host name here, which is already our local host port, which is the default. So if you didn't change it in the install process, you'll use this port. We have the root as our user. And then we just need to type in the password here by clicking store and vault. So if we type in our password, click OK. And if we hit test connection, we should get a green light saying that the connection was successfully made. And then we just click OK. And here we go, we can connect to our server by double clicking on this. And now we have MySQL Workbench open and connected to our server. And we can run any commands that we want to. For example, show databases. And if we run that, you'll see that we have all of our databases being shown down here. So that's how we know that we are connected to our SQL Server that we just downloaded. And that's all it takes to set up MySQL Server and MySQL Workbench together. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for similar content. Also, make sure to check out my very next video, which is going to be on how to learn SQL in one video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Have a good day.